We're glad to be sharing the ministry of Redemption Church with you. Now join us as we receive the Word of God. Welcome everybody to Redemption Church. Are you ready for Christmas yet? Are you like, no, no, thanks. Like, like you're like, oh, I don't know. Thanksgiving was rough. Who, who enjoyed Thanksgiving? Good. I'm glad you enjoyed Thanksgiving. We had uh, we had a great time ourselves. We hope that everybody had a great time. And we're really looking forward to this season that we have together. And let me start by saying these words to you. Merry Christmas. Can I tell you to say that back? Can you tell that back to me? Merry Christmas. I want to purpose you right now to say that early and often to people. Tell people Merry Christmas. Not in a way like I'm fighting about my 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 festivities and my holiday over your holiday. No, that you are excited about this season and what it means for you. Is that okay? All right, that's good. So work on that. Work on that. I want to ask you though to start to start this all off. I I got to ask you have you ever felt like the holiday season was more stressful than joyful? Somebody be honest with me, anybody? Yeah, there's sometimes it's like a little hectic, right? So, like I see Charles back there. He works in one of those big box stores. Pray for anybody who works in one of those big box stores. Like it's stressful. I want to I want to just come at you with a different kind of way to think about this series. Here it is. Our traditions ought to serve us. Our traditions ought to be there for us to make us more joyful, more peaceful, more hopeful, more loving. You agree, right? But we may feel like our traditions have become a burden. So let's talk about it a little bit. We've got thing called Christmas trees. Who has a Christmas tree in their home yet? Who is like, I've still got to put it up? Who's like, Really honest, we didn't put it, we didn't take it down last year. It's still up from the year 2023. Why mess up a good, bad, a good thing, right? So we've got good things and we got bad things with this. There are good things that can happen around a Christmas tree. Decorating a Christmas tree is a lot of fun. We watched Elf yesterday, not the most spiritual movie, but we watched Elf yesterday. We just had a good time putting up this tree and everybody putting a thing on there. But there can also be some bad things about the tree. You can be so pressured to put it out. And you're just like, I don't feel like, I don't know if I want to do it this year. And so you, you're doing it begrudgingly. And maybe that's not such a good thing. Or there's the gifts. There's good things about gifts. And there's some not so good things about gifts. Somebody say amen. It is really good to give a gift to someone. And let them know, I love you. I was thinking about you. I, but there's also some negative to that. People go into debt during this time like crazy because they aren't just buying one gift. They're buying 12 gifts for the same kid. And, and you know, it's, it's just really hard. When there's some good stuff about this tradition, but if we're not careful, there will be some bad stuff about this tradition, all right? And then there's the, tr there's the, there's the hope to have a perfect day. You know, that picturesque Christmas morning, everybody's wearing matching pajamas. Gosh, I can't get my kids to wear matching socks, much less we all match pajamas. Right, but, but we're all, we're, somebody, somebody's got, everybody's got hot cocoa, and every, one at a time. Gosh, has that ever happened in your home? Where one at a time they open a gift? No, it's like, like my kids become animals on December 25th in the morning. They're like, toy, like, no, like, it, you're trying for this picturesque moment. And as wonderful as that is, Hallmark, beautiful pictures to be made, often that doesn't happen. And what you're left with is just a bunch of wrapping paper on the, on the floor. And you're like, whoa, 
I'm going to have to pay off all this debt and clean up this wrapping paper. And then there's the schedule, right? It's good to have time together. It's good to have parties. We've got a couple of really big parties coming up over the next two weeks right here at Redemption Church. One of them is our Christmas party. We want you to come bring guests with you. We'd like to meet your friends. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have some rocking Christmas meal of El Norte Mexican food, fajitas. They're going to be wonderful. And then we've also got a get, a, 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 get, a blah, say it. We've also got a party for all of our Dream Team volunteers. Let's hear it for our workers around here. We're going to have a party just for them. We're going to have Jamaican barbecue for them. It's going to be top notch. But we've got these full schedules happening. And while there's some good times, there's some worship services in there, there's some parties together, there's caroling together, there's even spending time out shopping together, and you can have good things about that. You can also be so overworked that you are about to lose your ever-loving mind. And that's not so good. Somebody say that's not so good. So here's what I want to bring to you. Here it is. Are Christmas traditions stressing you? Here's the thing you can do. You have permission to do this. You can make new tradition. I want you this month to think about not breathing life into traditions to make them a thing. Like if you've ever seen the movie Mean Girls, very spiritual movie also, trying to make fetch happen, if you know the reference. You're trying to make the tradition happen. You're trying to make it meaningful by pushing all this time and energy into it. Instead of that, choose traditions that breathe life into you. I want you to think about this week. Not breathing life into the tradition, but finding a tradition that breathes life into you. So inventory your Christmas traditions this season. Our message series, we're calling it Chill Christmas. Crafting your holiday vibes. We're working on it, right? Here's the series outline. Next week, December 8th, we're going to be talking about navigating holiday chaos. It's a crazy time of the year. Do you know what tradition we need? We need a tradition of peace during this time. And guess what? Jesus shows us how to have a tradition of peace. And we're going to be looking at that. December 15th, we talk about rediscovering simple fun. All all these things that are not fun, put those to the side and rediscover joyful things. There is joy to be had in this season. And it's simpler And easier than you think. Joy doesn't have to be complicated. And then December 22nd, we're going to talk about how to make a moment. Instead of being left with wrapping paper trash and empty feelings, feelings, we're going to have a better option. And that option is the option of love. Right? Real quick, before we get to our title of today, what, what, what we're actually doing, we're doing something very traditional. There is the traditional Advent calendar. Some of you are like, what is that? Well, that's an old tradition of Christian churches where they would, in order, celebrate four things in a row. And they would celebrate, they would celebrate hope, they would celebrate peace, they'd celebrate joy, they would celebrate love, and finally, on Christmas Day, they'd celebrate Christ. And right over here, we have a very traditional setup over here. We have these candles over here. Do you see them? Each week we're going to be lighting one of those candles. Today, we're talking about hope, and we've lit the candle of hope. Today, our message is this. How to light up dark times. How to light up dark times. We live in dark times. Do I need to convince anybody of that? We live in dark times. I don't know if you've noted, but the the phrase World War III is on the uptick. Has anybody noticed it? If you go to Twitter, you go to social media, and you search how many people are talking about World War III, it's on the rise. If you if you watch the evening news, it is on the rise. If you read the paper, if you go on social media, people are talking about World War III. That's on a world stage, and that's some of the darkness that we are dealing with. It doesn't get much darker than a world war. Would you agree? That, that ranks really high on the, the, the idea of darkness. So that's on a worldwide scale. That's everywhere we're going. It's crazy talk. And it, to, to even think that that could be possible is very alarming. 
Now let's come closer to home. So that's the world stage. Now, what about us? Here in the U.S., we are in the middle of an epidemic. It's not COVID. There's no masks that can save you from such an epidemic or, or a poke in the arm. No, we're talking about an anxiety epidemic. 20% experienced anxiety disorder within this last calendar year where they went into a doctor and they were told, what you've got is a disorder of anxiety. Now, good news if you're female. Let's hear it for the ladies. All right, ladies. Guess what? You are more likely to have anxiety disorder. I'm sorry. Oh, that wasn't good news. What about the young people? Let's hear it for the young people. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, wait. The younger you are, the more likely you are to have anxiety disorder. So the young ladies especially look out. If you're female, if you're younger, you're, you're, you're more likely to be in the 20% of people who this year went through a season of a disorder of anxiety. And when we look at reasons for anxiety, here's some of the reasons they have. Disconnection, social pressure, uncertainty, financial stress, and then poor habits, especially sleep habits. Anxiety reasons. Now let's keep this up on the screen really quick. Compare these reasons for the 20% of people that are experiencing anxiety disorder. Compare this list with your Christmas tradition. Compare this really quick with your schedule over the next few weeks. Compare this list really quickly with your budget. Is it possible we are less connected to family, friends, and God, even though we're in a season that celebrates Christ coming to earth? Is it possible that we are so taken with everything around us, all the glittery stuff, that we actually don't grow closer to each other? Our families, our friends, and even God. I would tell you, yeah, that's possible. How about social pressure of the perfect? If you are worried about decor, you're worried about snapping the perfect Instagram pic, right? This is where you are. That social pressure of looking happy, even though y'all just yelled at each other, that, that blessed feeling of we just yelled bloody murder at each other in the car. And now, kids, let's get out of the car and act like we're the perfect family because we're going to Aunt Ruth. And they can't know. We've got to keep up the appearance. I know I'm talking about a thing here. Then there's the social pressure of the busy. You've got a full calendar. There will be people that are going to try to make multiple parties on the same day. Don't do it. Tell me that you can't come to my house. I'll cry a little bit, but I will understand. All right? Courtney, you're off the hook. All right. But we're working on this social pressure of a full calendar. And then, are we less certain? Are, are, we, are we fighting with uncertainty? We've got a new year coming. And you know what many people are doing right now? Oh, we're singing it's the most wonderful time of the year. But most people right now are weighing divorce because the number one divorce month every year is what month january they're thinking about it now they will present the letters and the form in january that's going on right now but let's make sure to snap a really happy picture then there's money stress anybody struggle with money stress we're talking January through November. Anybody struggle with money stress? And now here we are in December. It doesn't get any easier. There's the, the pressure to provide. And as soon as you provide and pay that, you swipe that credit card. My goodness, this weight comes upon you. And it's debt and you're worried about it. And then let's go with poor habits. Holiday diets. Holidays kill diets, right? And do we have poor sleep during this time? Yeah. All of the above. So let's review. Let, let what I have here. This Christmas is World War III and anxiety on steroids. Merry Christmas, everyone. And to all a good night. Right? 
Are we enjoying the season? Or is the season perhaps amplifying our struggle? Sometimes the season is adding to the noise. Sometimes the season is revving up the volume. I want to know, can you relate today? Can any, am I speaking to anybody today? There's a few people. All right, that's really good. I'm glad. I'm glad. So here's what I want to talk to you about today. Here's the, the full crux of my message. Here it is. I want to talk to you about the ideal versus the real. Can you say that with me? The ideal versus the real. What is ideal? Well, we have those images of the perfect family. We have lavish gifts. Somewhere, someone, I've, I've never met this person, but I'm told by the television that it's a thing. Somewhere, someone is going to wake up on a wintry morning, and they're going to walk out, and there's going to be a new car with a bow on it. Have you met this person? These people are weird. Who are these people? But there's this idea of lavish gifts. Every kiss begins with debt. No, I mean with K. We, we've got this pressure to buy people jewelry and really expensive things. And, and it didn't matter that we bought them the best gaming system a year ago or two years ago. There is a brand new gaming system. There is a brand new iPhone. All of this stuff. And then non-stop celebration. This ideal that it's just, it's fun all the time. It's Christmas. We gotta laugh all the time. Why are you can't be upset now? It's Christmas. That's the ideal. But what is reality? I'll tell you what reality is. Those crazy kids of mine are out of school. Now they're not the teacher's problem. They're my problem, Gina. That's reality. The reality is packed stores and really bad traffic. And the moment you get off work, it's midnight. It is. Every night. Every day. I mean, she, my wife comes home. She takes a little nap, and she says, Oh no, I slept the whole night. And I'm like, babe, it's only 5.45. It, it's not midnight. But that's what's going on during this time. It, but dark streets, packed, packed streets, and, and packed stores. And, and then we've got loneliness. Some, here's, I, here's not ideal, but it's the reality that many people are missing their loved one because they aren't going to be there on the 25th. There is going to be an empty chair at the table. Someone who is a part of the tradition is now not there. Oh, their families going through this because their patriarchs, their moms and dads, their grandparents, they have gone on. They've passed away. And now you've got a family going, well, what do we do now? And somebody's like, well, I guess y'all come to my house. And they're not wild about that idea, but they feel the burden of that, and then they're under this, they're trying to match the ideal, but the reality is really, really messy. There is this gap between the ideal and the real, and it leaves us feeling hopeless, and it leaves us feeling lost in the dark. But God wants us to know something. Here it is. The very first Christmas, the one we read about in the Gospels, was not ideal. It was messed up. So we remember the anxiety reasons? Remember that? Our anxiety reasons? That's actually the first Christmas. Every bit of that fits under the heading of the very first Christmas of Mary, Joseph, and a baby to be born. Disconnection? Huh. They were disconnected because they thought Mary had been unfaithful and that, that family left them. They went to the hometown of Joseph and there was nowhere for them to stay. Their family had shut the door on them, it looked like. Their social pressure, and guess what? Guess where they're spending the night? They're spending the night in a manger. There's uncertainty. What's going to happen in the future? Where are we going to go? You know where they end up going a little bit later? They end up leaving the entire nation of Israel and going to a place called Egypt to run away from an evil king who wants to kill their baby. King Herod sought to kill them, and so they ran to Egypt, filled with uncertainty. And then the financial stress. It can't be easy to leave your carpentry job back in Nazareth and just go to Egypt. And then there's poor habits. I imagine it was really hard to sleep. 
during that time. I imagine it was really, forget the idea about the manger. I imagine just the stress that they were going through, the worry that they were going through had to keep them up. I'm telling you that they had every reason in the world to live under the, the heading of anxiety. I want to tell you that this is not a mistake in the story, but it's prophetic. This is fulfilling prophecy. Isaiah prophesied it. Isaiah 9 and 6. Now this is the verse we always quote every Christmas, so let's get it out of the way and quote it now. Isaiah 9 and 6. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulder. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Friends, who is Isaiah 9 6 talking about? It's talking about Jesus. We read, we sing about this verse often. You know what verse we don't read enough? It's four verses earlier. Isaiah 9 and 2. It says this. Isaiah 9 2 says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. I want to tell you real quick that dark time, dark times do not ruin Christmas. It is because of dark times we need a Christmas. That those dark times did not ruin that original Christmas. But it's because of the dark times that Christ came to earth. That angels sang. That there was glory in the highest and on earth. Peace. Goodwill towards men. This is a time of Christmas. Christmas is two words put together. Christ. Mass. And it basically means, in my just simple words, it means a Jesus celebration. It means a time for believers to come together and worship that Jesus came. It means a party for Jesus. It means good and happy times. It means that for a moment, in the middle of a dark world, we remember a light has dawned. People in darkness have seen what? I think it was a new iPad, right? Let's bring up that verse again. The people walking in darkness have, I'm sure it says fancy tree. Does it say fancy tree? The people walking in darkness have seen what? Perfect pictures on Instagram with lots of hearts on them. Right? No. No. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Can I tell you something? Only one event could fulfill this prophecy of Isaiah. Only one event could happen in the middle of this darkness and change it. Only the birth of God's Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah, He is Emmanuel, God with us, He is Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, He is the light of the world. Only He could push back on the darkness. Not gifts, not trees, not parties, not singing carols. All those things that are good, but also, if we're really honest, have a little stress attached to them. None of those things could push back the darkness. Only one event could push back the darkness. And it is Christ coming to earth for us. So Jesus had 12 disciples, right? Y'all follow me so far? Y'all know that part, right? One of his disciples described Jesus like this. John chapter 1, verse 4. He says about Jesus, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. Now you, I'm telling you that there is no way in the world this guy wrote this verse and didn't think about Isaiah 9 and 2. He's saying that darkness that Isaiah talked about and the light that would dawn in the middle of it, we found him. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He shines in the darkness. John refers to Jesus as light in darkness. Where does 
John get this description of Jesus? Where could he have possibly learned to call Jesus the light? Well, from Jesus himself. Do you know this verse? John 8, 12. Jesus' own words are this. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's Jesus' own words. Do you believe the words of Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus can show up in darkness and push it back? Do you believe that He shines in darkness? Only the birth of Jesus Christ is that light. And if you do believe that Jesus is that light, why wouldn't you focus on Jesus during these dark times? The darker it gets, the more we got to focus on the light of the world. The scarier it gets, the more we need to, to look to Jesus. The more worried we are about the future, we need to look to the one who's got the whole world in his hand. But leave it to us, silly humans. Silly human, check. Raise your hand if you're a silly human. Silly human, silly human. Some of y'all, some of y'all didn't raise your hands, but I know. I, I know. I know. Listen, leave it to silly humans. We take a season about Christ, about Jesus. And then we spend all our time and energy anxiously doing this. This list of things. Right there. Where's that list? There it is. That's what we're doing. We take a season that should be all about Christ. We sing it about Christ. We come to church on Sunday and we spend like 30 minutes, an hour about Christ. But then we go back to this schedule. We're like, oh, I'm sorry, i got to go, Pastor. I've got a 7 o'clock appointment with disconnection. I'm running late, right? This is who we are. If Christ really is the light, then we ought to focus on Him and not this. Do you get that? You've got to make up your mind. If you are like stressed out, could it be that you're focused on the darkness and not the light? None of the Christmas Attributes. None, none, of the, the, none of the decor that you do can shine the light. Only Christ can. So what am I saying? Here's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say this, Savannah. We should change our focus. We should make new traditions that light up our darkness. You get that? So let's think about the ideal versus the real again. We're back to the ideal versus the real. The ideal is not, we got to change this thought, the ideal is not stalking, chestnuts, open fire, all of that flammable, by the way. Be careful. It was a joke, Jake. When did you get that? And then the, the ideal is not buying everything on the wish list. Even if you can brag, I got it on sale. I'm going to preach that for a second. Because some of us think it's okay to go into debt if we bought it on sale. No, it's not. It's just as bad if you pay full price or half price if you don't have the money and you have to put it on a credit card. I'm about to get ran out of here, y'all. i got to stop. That is, the ideal is not any of those things. The ideal is not even, well, we dressed up all the kids and we got a picture on Santa's lap. Nothing wrong with pictures on Santa's lap. I'm going to try to make my 14 year old stand by Santa this year. Pray for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. We'll, we'll argue about it later, son. Oh my gosh. Lord. Pray, church. Pray. The ideal is, is not even us all getting dressed up and coming to church and looking the part of a happy family, even though we screamed at each other on the drive home. What is the ideal? Let's make it simple. Jesus is the ideal. Jesus is the perfect Savior. And Jesus is actually the perfect gift. If you're looking for the perfect gift to give this year, it's Jesus. It's the hope. It's the peace. It's the joy. It's the love of Jesus. That's actually what is ideal. And we have bought the advertisements line about being a Hallmark family. 
or being a season to remember Toyota Thon family. <laughs> this feels weird to even say, right? Jesus is the idea. Can you just take one moment, close your eyes, and say, Jesus, it's about you. Jesus, you're the ideal. Jesus, you're the perfect picture of what this season is supposed to be. So we've got this idea. This changes everything. If Jesus is the ideal, then what does that change with the real? Well, here it is. That Jesus steps into our real. You see, just because we say Jesus is our ideal doesn't make our real any less messy. You can still be going through relationship issues. You can still be going through financial issues. You can still be worried about the year 2025. You can still be worried about World War III. There's all these things to be concerned with around us. But the point is this. That Jesus is the ideal who steps into our real. What does Jesus do? He steps into our anxiety. He steps into our darkness. He steps into our fear. He steps into our loss. Whatever it is you're struggling right now. The reality. The messy reality. Jesus came to earth to step into that. Be Lord over it. To redeem it. To reconcile you back to God. That's why He came to earth. And this is what Christmas is all about. And this is our hope. Hope is what lights up darkness. During this time, we need to hope for the one who is ideal and invite him to step into our real. The one who is ideal came to the ones who are not ideal. Y'all stick with me just a second. It's just a kid. We're good. Listen. The one who is ideal steps into our real. That's us. Our messiness. We are not ideal. Like It's okay to just go there. I'm just telling you right now. If you're looking for the ideal family. The fluids are not that. We are not that. If you're looking for the ideal person. I am not that. If you're looking for the ideal church. Not here. If you're looking for the ideal preacher. Thank y'all for not saying amen too early. It's not me. Whatever you're looking for ideal. I am way short of that. I fall way short of the glory of God. I fall way short of the ideal. We are the ones that are messy. But Jesus did not recriminate, turn away from our mess. He steps into our mess. I've got a not ideal Christmas story. I was thinking about some not ideal things. And this is my favorite Christmas story of all time. We were at home in Waco, Texas, and one by one, I was I was probably like five or six. One by one, family members started coming. Family members who had never been to our house even. And they would just come to our house one by one. And I counted this week. I tried to remember my little my little five-year-old, six-year-old mind who was there. We had 14 people in our small little house in Waco, Texas. And it was so crowded. It was hard to sit down. It was hard to be anywhere. But we were all there. And then the most memorable moment of all is this. We had a broken toilet. We had a Christmas bucket, y'all. Yule time. Yule tidings. We just had it. It was so wonderful. We had a plastic bucket in our bathroom. And it was just a wild, broken kind of mess. It was not ideal. But you know what? We had dinner together. You know what? We laughed together. You know what? I loved it. And I'd give anything to go back in time. And live that not ideal moment. Again. I loved it. Here's why. Because the people I loved were there. And the people who were there loved Jesus. And also the love of Jesus was present. And now that I think about it all these years later, that's not unideal at all. That is very ideal 
after all. People that you love, people who love Jesus, the love of Jesus present, that is what is ideal. Maybe that manger wasn't so unideal after all. Maybe that awful king trying to kill them, maybe love was present there, even though that hatred was present. So what should you do with all this information? Do not, you know, turn off your toilet and try the bucket thing. That is not a tradition you have to try this year. Right? Bless you all. Bless you all with that. Thank you, Pastor. That's a good info. But here's what I want you to do with this info. It's our call to action. Would you all stand all over this place? We have the ideal coming into contact with our real. So here's what I want you to do. Acknowledge the real. Admitting struggle is the first step towards finding hope. So go ahead and admit, I've got struggles. Yeah, I am worried about finances. Musicians, you'll come on up. I am worried about the struggle in my relationships. I am worried about... You are being real with it. It it doesn't become ideal by you hiding the real, but instead by owning the real, acknowledging the real, then you can start to hope. So that's number one. Number two, change your focus. You need a new ideal. And that, that can only be Jesus. Any other thing will fall short. No other thing can pierce the darkness. No other thing can push back the darkness and reveal light to those walking in the darkness. So find a new ideal. Look for light. Here's what you can do. Here's just a small thing. Practice gratitude by noticing even the tiniest blessings each day. If you see something really tiny, listen, I'm going to tell you this, you aren't going to like it. Even the biggest grouch on your job or in your school, or in your home. I didn't say that. I didn't say it. They'll just hurt. Even if the the biggest grouch does something halfway that looks like light, acknowledge it. Celebrate it. And say, that was so good. That was so good. And build them up in it. Encourage that light. Encourage it. And then who knows what will come from that. They might have a conversation about what that means. And how we ought to do that more. And how about, you could even say this. You can put, turn this one out on them. You can say, hey, the year 2025 is coming. Let's do a lot more of this for others the next year. Let's do that. And then uh, be a light for others. Sometimes the best way to find hope is to offer it to someone else. Sometimes we're so focused on our darkness. If we'll just focus on someone else and bring hope to them, that's where we will find a brand new light in us, a brand new light of hope. And then finally, I want you to, right now in this moment, we're not talking tomorrow, we're not talking next week, we're talking right now, take this moment to focus on Jesus. In two ways, worship and prayer. If you're having anxiety, why don't you come pray and worship God as the light of the world. If you have people around you that are feeling anxious and worried, Why don't you come in this place and start to worship and ask God to be the light in your life and in your heart and begin to pray for them. These altars are open. Why don't you come now? Let's talk to God. Come on, Dream Team. I want to see you down here. I want to see us all take this moment to make this about Jesus. God, I'm changing my focus. God, not on the real, but on the ideal. I'm acknowledging my messed up real and I'm inviting you to come and be in the center of who I am. Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's pray together. Let's worship together. Let's make this moment about the Lord Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everybody watching and listening online. I pray your glory. I pray your best for them, God. Lord, I pray that they would realize they are loved by you. That you are fully in love with them and for them. Lord, I pray, God, Lord, that they would feel the touch of your goodness. That they would pray to you and worship you right where they are. And that they would feel you, the light of the world, step into their darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's reach out to the Lord in this house. God, you're so good to us. For more information about redemption, look us up online at redemptionplano.com. We want to hear more from you. 
so be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or even our anonymous text line at 469-651-1178. Thanks for joining us, and have a blessed day.